all I hear from everyone is just go as hard as you can. That's in every sport. As long as you try as hard as you can, that's such bullshit. Trying hard as you can doesn't get you anything. Right. Being good at what you're doing. That's a, that's a module we teach in our courses, right? There's a video analysis, like you have to know how to see the throw. And that's actually the first thing we teach in the program. We talked about, like I said, at the camp, you know, hey, it's, a pro is about a second and a half, maybe a little less, and a brand new kid that's 12 years old or 10 years old is probably two seconds. Yeah. It's that's the difference between, the difference right yeah. yeah. And so how, how do you coach something that happens so right. quick? So that being said, if you were going in and you're talking to, you know, you got to think back to literally like a 10 year old and you're going to teach him the discus, what, what's going to be some of the, the process? How's it, you know, what's going to be the process you're going to go through? Well, first, no effort. That's what I see way too much of young coaches letting people try to throw as hard as they can. Right. And it just develops bad habits. Right. Um, so no effort whatsoever. Movement, just move better. You know, that's where you start with somebody like that. Just move better. So right. you show them, I think, the whole part, the whole thing. Show them what a throw looks like. Even maybe show them what a throw looks like by somebody their own age that's good at it. Right. Other than yeah. Looking. Daniel Stahl, you know I mean? Because that, that's two different animals. Yeah. Um, then you got to work on the parts. I have always done the throwing part from the front of the ring and move back, mm -hmm. and the technical part from the back of the ring and move front. Right. Um, you know, the two aspects of being able to release the discus in the front of the ring and being able to get on your left in the back of the ring. Right. Are the aspects of, at the very start. So, you know, that same thing. Learn teaching them how to control the discus, handle the discus, throw the discus, and then try to understand uh, what it is. Right. Because you know? it's not like any other sport that any other kid has ever done. There, there's no other sport, uh, you know, you can throw in a twist on a dunk or you can jump in the air and do a spin, but it's not something that you work at. And so the whole idea of rotational movement is so foreign to most mm -hmm. athletes. They're all linear. Yeah. You know, everything they do is linear, frontward, backward, maybe some sideways, but no turn. Right. You know, there's nothing you do in football where you teach them to turn, except for maybe a defensive lineman rotating around, you know, doing a spin move. So it's so foreign when they come in to understand how their body should react to spinning. Yeah. And that's one of the things we teach, right? It's totally unnatural. Right. And you're going to have to work on it for a period of time until it becomes natural. And then the American way, harder is better and faster is better. And so you got to beat that out of them, you know, because it's not that. It, it is. It's 1.5 seconds, but it's not fast. Right. But it is fast. Yeah. It's a conundrum in their mind that is really hard for them to understand sometimes. All they hear from everyone is just go as hard as you can. That's in every sport. As long as you try as hard as you can, that's such bullshit. <laughs> Trying hard as you can doesn't get you anything. Right being good at what you're doing, you yeah. know, and so developing that's a skill. Like I told my kids, I can give you a curl workout that's really hard and you will work as hard as you can. That's not going to make you a better discus thrower. So just working hard doesn't get you anything. It's, it's got to be specific to what you're trying to get good at. Right. It's the same thing with, with movement. Move first, then add intensity or effort and those right. kind of things. Rhythm first, then tempo. Mm -hmm. I really like those two combinations of words. The tempo for a young child or a young uh, training years, even, even right? If they're older, uh, masters. I really year. said, yeah. There's yeah. A the tempo should always be very low. Understand the rhythm, others understand the positions, understand where you want to be. Then you can try to start adding more tempo and effort. So from your basics, you know, obviously we'll teach basics on foot positions, heel toe and movement, and and uh, we've talked about the the pivoting, how you're moving the hips versus just you know, the, the old, uh, I think it derives from baseball, like the squash the bug kind of thing. Yeah. And that's not actually how the hips move. It's not rotational like that. It's a pushing rotation. You always have the... Right. And even to the finish, right. you're pushing your big toe to move your hip. Your foot moving is just really a result of your hip moving. Exactly. If your foot just moves to turn your hip and you don't push into the ground, all you're doing is turning. Right. It's not creating any power. Yeah. So the power has to be created. You know, that's that's with anything. You know, it's the same thing as pitching. If you don't push off the mound and 
don't get over your left, then there's not going to be any power in the pitch and, and batting too. That's the, anybody who plays has played baseball that throws, they try to use those analogies. Right. If you swing the bat in front of your hip, you're, you're not going to hit the ball very hard. No. You might hit the ball, but it's not going to go anywhere. You know, so it's the same kind of power that you have to have in the throw. If your hip's not in front, you just don't have very much power involved. Big muscles first. Yeah, now what about uh, basics like um, the importance of carrying the discus, holding the shot? Super critical, doesn't take a lot of time, but it often doesn't get taught right. Same. Yes. Yeah. Agree. And that's the front of the ring stuff, right? Where you're teaching them how to hold the discus, where the discus should be in their hand according to their level of, bit of ability. They all want to grab it. You know, some people put too much over like one of my girls this year, you know, I was watching her throw and it kept coming out and not spinning at all. And she barely had her fingers over the edge. It's like, no, you got to get something over it. Yeah. You can't spin it. But uh, very important. I think the biggest key, like with the shot put, they, they take it and they all hold they it hold like it, this. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. kind of like, no, you're, you're pushing it that way. You're not pushing it that way. Right. And, and so those little things, if you don't pay attention to it and just say, here's the ball, do some standing throws then bad habits are going to be developed from the very start. Yeah. And then, because what I always talk about, this, these sports are so kinesthetic, feeling-based, that if you're, you inherently, if you hold the discus wrong, like one of the things I always tell people is that you see with beginning throwers, they try to hold it and their thumbs up. They don't realize that right. just by doing this, the discus now will sit right. in, the, in the hand. But as soon as you're trying to not drop the discus, that overrides all the, the proper feelings and length and positions and drag and tension because that, that's the primary response, right? And that's going to take over everything. So that's why I always feel like, because as a private coach, right, I see a lot of different guys and they come in and it's a surprisingly large percentage that don't carry the discus right. Well, I think it's, I see the same in weightlifting a lot. I, I think throws coaches could be the same. Private coach is obviously different, but you still should look that you're going to have your athlete for the long term. I, you know, like I try to tell high school coaches, it's like it's a quadrennial, it's like training for the Olympics. You want your athlete to be the best when they're senior, regardless of how good they are as freshmen, whether they were terrible or whether they were, they were advanced mm -hmm. freshmen, you still want them to be their best when they're seniors. So the whole program's got to be developed so that you're increasing as you go. And so if you put everything and go full and throw hard and everything's on that freshman, then they're going to create habits that you're just going to be trying to break right. for the next four years. So if you, the same thing we do in weightlifting we, at, at Newport, it used to be you came summer football or summer program, you work for eight weeks on PVC pipe because it's just about positions and rhythm and right. movement. It's not about how much weight you can lift. In four years, it's going to be about how much weight you lift. Right. But if you don't do this now, you're not going to lift very much weight in four years. And yeah. it's the same thing in throwing. You know, if you if you develop these bad habits now, then I don't care what you do. I saw it last night with Aiden. Aiden can throw the hell out of the ball, but he wasn't hitting positions and he had a terrible rhythm last night, so he didn't throw it very far comparatively yeah. for him. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it, it comes down to it. And the same thing at the Olympic level. You know, we've all seen people do what they can do and that's the people who keep winning are the ones that have the mind to be able to get in the ring and do what they need to do but we've all seen people who've been throwing really well and then they get in the ring and they can't find themselves and yeah. all of a sudden they're lost and they can't throw where they should be throwing right